Hey, what's up you guys? It's Judy here with my life as Kikai. On this channel, I create videos on beauty tips, product reviews, makeup tutorials, and lifestyle advice with the aim to entertain, educate, and enrich the lives of others. Today's video is going to be a makeup tutorial on this look that I have right here. It is very glowy and highlighted. And what I love about it is that it is a neutral eye paired with a bold lip. Now you can do this neutral eye for any occasion. I think it'd be great for just any going out party, for a glam event. It is really quite suitable for any occasion that you might have. Before I go any further, if you guys do enjoy my content, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up. If you want to be notified of any future uploads that I do, then be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already. I do put out videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday every single week. So if you want to see how I created this neutral eye and paired it with this bold lip, then just keep on watching. What up you guys? I'm gonna get my hair out of my face and as usual I'm gonna start off with the eyes. So I'm gonna scoot you in a bit closer so you can see what I'm doing and I'm gonna try and stay in frame. I'm going to start with some concealer to use as an eyeshadow base and as usual I'm going to use a lighter shade of concealer so that the colors that I put on top will stand out a whole lot more. For today's look I'll be using the Morphe and Kathleen Light eyeshadow palette. This one has been out for a little while but as you can see it is very much well loved. This is the eyeshadow palette that I used on my wedding day when I did my makeup, my mom and my three sisters makeup. So yeah, this is what it looks like and I think it's just a really great eyeshadow palette. It's It looks pretty neutral but you can do a lot of looks with this one. It's got some deep burgundy shades, it's got the nice black shade which I really like having a black in an eyeshadow palette because a black can really change the vibe and the look of any eyeshadow. So I'll be using this one today because it has those natural sort of shadows that I will be using in this neutral eye look. So I'm going to use this creamy sort of shadow here to set my concealer. Taking a fluffy blending brush, I'm going to go into this brown shade here. It's a nice matte brown neutral shade that's perfect for the transition but it has tiny little flecks of glitter in it which I don't feel shows up when you apply it to the eye. I'm just using it as a transition and the glitter sort of, you know, fades out after you've blended it out in the crease. Next, I'm going to go into this deeper brown shade here and apply that a little bit closer to my transition and more to the outer edge of my eye. But I'm going to be really messy and sort of draw it out this way as well. Now I'm going to go into this matte burgundy shade here. It's almost like a, not quite burgundy, but almost like a deep purpley burgundy sort of shade that right there. It's showing up a whole lot darker on camera than it really is but I'm just gonna take a little bit of that and dust off the excess and just apply that right on the outer edge of my eye here. I don't want that color to be really strong. I just want to deepen up the outer corner and make it really subtle. As much as possible, I'm going to try and keep a lot of those deeper shades away from the center of my eyes because that's where I'm going to really lighten it up to give the eye and the whole face the most neutral look as possible. Now taking a smaller fluffy blending brush, I'm going to go into this almost slaty sort of color here. I'm just going to take that really lightly and deepen up this outer edge even further. And as usual, when I'm blending it out, I'm allowing myself to be messy on the edge here because as usual, I will be doing my foundation afterwards. That's why it helps to do your foundation after your eye look because you can be as messy as you like with your eye look and just you can just clean it up afterwards. When most of the color has blended out here, I'm going to really lightly bring a little bit more color into the inner corner as well but only ever so slightly. Just because I do have a lot of underbrow space here and I don't want this part here to be completely blank. Now taking a small packing brush, I'm going to give that a little bit of a spritz with some setting spray. And then I'm going to go into that matte creamy shadow here and apply that all on the inner part of my eyelids. I'm 
taking that fairly high above my crease as well just so that the inner corners of my eyes look extra bright. Now I'm going to take that fluffy blending brush and redefine the outer edge of my eye with a little bit of all of these three shades here. Now taking that same packing brush again, I'm going to now go into the shimmery shade. I'm going to give that a bit of a spritz and apply that right over the top of where I applied that first light shadow. I want that creamy shadow to come out a little bit more dense and pigmented. So I'm going to take a tighter packing brush and just go in over the top of that again. Now I'm going to clean up under the eyes, then go in with my base, foundation, concealer, bronzer, blush, highlight, and then I'm going to finish up the eyes. And now just because I'm extra, I'm going to go in with two primers. First, I'm going to go in with the smoothing primer. This one is a Mecca Cosmetica Soft Focus Smoothing Primer. And this one, I'm just going to focus in the areas where I tend to have the most texture. And for me, that is around my forehead here, around my mouth, and underneath the eyes. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't get it in your eye. For the rest of my face, I'm going to go in with the hydrating primer. For foundation, I'm going to be using the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation in the shade Classic Beige. As much as I hate the smell of this foundation, it makes your skin look so nice. It applies so nicely on the skin and the smell does go away after you blend it in. But oh my goodness, it smells horrible. Probably isn't the right shade for me. So this step is unnecessary. Try and go with the right shade the first time. I'm gonna go over the top with the shade Desert Beige. It's probably a little bit darker. It probably has a better undertone for my skin. So I'm just gonna go over the top with a little bit of that. To conceal and highlight, I'm going to go in with the usual, my Maybelline Age Rewind. And I'm just gonna apply that under the eyes. And to set all of that in, I'm going to go in with my RCMA Translucent No Color Powder. I actually like to use my finger for those smaller areas that I have the finer lines to actually apply my powder. Because I feel with my finger, I can re just really press all that powder in those areas. And it just really helps those areas keep from creasing. Now for a bit of bronzer, I'm going to go into my Morphe Brontour in the shade Vlogger. And because I want a bit more of a defined contour than the bronzer gives me, I'm going to go into this contour shadow in my BYS Contour Trio palette. And I'm going to lightly apply that in my contour areas. I'm going to use the Jaclyn Hill and Becca Cosmetics face palette. I'm just going to use these three shades here really lightly. I really only need to go in once with this blush because I like more of a subtle blush and this is so pigmented that whatever blush is left on the brush I just need to like blend that in. For brows, I'm just going to use a little bit of dark brown eyeshadow just to redefine my brows. I don't really need to fill them in a whole lot. I just want to kind of carve out the edges a little bit better. That'll do. Don't want to get too crazy with those. I actually do already have really thick brows. So now I'm going to go in with a little bit of clear brow gel. This one's just the Anastasia Beverly Hills Clear Brow Gel. Now to highlight under the brow bone, I'm going to go in with that creamy matte shade again and just highlight under there. Mm -hmm. 
Now to finish off the eyes, I'm going to take that fluffy blending brush again, go into a little bit of this brown shade here, and just sort of redefine that outer edge, but only very lightly. I'm just trying to keep this eye look as neutral as humanly possible. Well, maybe not humanly, as much as I can. <laughs> Now I'm going to go into the waterline with a brown eyeliner. You can use any that you like. I will be using the ColourPop Cream Gel Eyeliner in the shade Mr. Bing. And I'm only going to take that from the outer edge of my eye right to the center of my eye just to keep the inner corners of my eyes a whole lot more bright. Okay, now other than taking a little bit of this shade on all over the lower lash line and a tiny little bit of this on the outer part of the lower lash line, I'm not going to do much else with it. And taking that blending brush with no extra product on it, I'm just going to run that under my lower lash line just to blend it out a whole lot more. Now taking another clean fluffy blending brush, I'm going to go into that shimmery creamy shadow and blend that into the inner corners of my eyes. This has been one of my favorite things to do lately, not just applying highlight to the inner corner tear duct. I just like blending a bit of highlight into the whole inner corner of my eye just to brighten it up a whole lot more and just to give it more of a subtle glow. And I think because of my eye shape, I can do that because I have larger indents here on the inner corners of my eyes. Now keeping with the neutral eyes, I'm going to apply a really thin eyeliner on both eyes. I'll add some mascara and I'll be right back and finish off the look. I'm going to do eyeliner off camera because I tend to get out of frame anyway as I'm leaning down over my mirror. So all I'm going to be doing is applying a really thin eyeliner or as thin as I can get it, applying a decent coat of mascara. I'm not going to be doing falsies because keeping in the theme with a neutral eye look. Then I'll be back and finish off the look with some lips, which will actually be this statement of this whole look here. Okay, now I'm back with liner and mascara. I'm going to start with the lips. First of all, I want to clean off all that powder and foundation that's on my lips so I'm not left with a dry powdery sort of look. Also, my lips are a bit red because I exfoliated the crap out of them and probably overdid it a little bit because it kind of hurts. <laughs> Alright, just blending in those edges again. To line my lips, I'm going to be using the Rimmel Exaggerate Full Color Lip Liner. This one is in the shade under my spell. And I'm going to sort of overdraw my lips as well. And to fill in the rest of my lips, I'm going to use the Ofra Cosmetics Long Lasting Liquid Lipstick in the shade Milan. This one is a really nice deep burgundy sort of shade, but kind of with a brownie dusty sort of undertone. going to apply a liberal amount of setting spray and while my face is still damp I'm going to go in with some highlight I'm going to be using the Milani Cosmetics strobe light highlighter in this shade Sun Glow and to get that highlight to melt into the face I am going to apply more setting spray I'm going to take some ColourPop Super Shop Cheek Highlight in the shade On The Cusp. This is from the Kathleen Lights Zodiac Collection and I'm just going to apply that all over my decolletage because I want to glow today. A really great thing about this look is if you wanted to ham up the drama even more then you could always add some false eyelashes, add a little bit of glitter on the inner corners of your eyes or even on the center of your lips. The great thing about this look is that it's beautiful on its own as it is but then you could always ham it up even more with the extraness and the glitter and the highlight and yeah, I'm really loving how this look turned out. Okay, so this is the finished 
Spanish look. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful and informative. For me, this is the perfect neutral eye and bold lip combo. I'm definitely a deep burgundy red or red shade lip type of girl and this for me is a neutral eye. It might not be as neutral for some people as you would like but if you wanted it to be less bold, maybe don't apply eyeliner and go even less on the shadows of your outer eye but for me because of my eye shape and if you have the same type of eye shape then it might be more flattering to you to really shade out the outer corners of your eyes and leave the inner corners of your eyes a lot more neutral and a lot, apply a lot more shimmery or light shades in the inner corners of your eyes to make them stand out a whole lot more and then let the statement of your face be the bold lips now you could pair this eye look with any bold lip color that you like you could even go a black lip you could go a really nice bright pink lip this eyeshadow look is really neutral and you can pair it with any color lipstick that you want. You can swap it out for anything. I'm really loving this glowy highlighted look as well. I'm loving how the eyes have paired with this bold lip. It's absolutely beautiful. And I applied some highlight on my decolletage and neck as well because who doesn't want to glow brighter than the gods so yeah that's it for this video guys i hope you enjoyed it if you did enjoy it please give it a thumbs up be sure to subscribe before you leave if you haven't already click that notification bell if you want to be notified of all my future uploads i put out new videos every monday wednesday and friday every single week follow me on other social media facebook instagram and twitter all of them are live at ski guide the same across the board Thank you guys for being here. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Oh my goodness, the bags under my eyes are real today. No taking, no, no taking. I to give that a little bit of a... Oh, I can't speak today. Oh, long lasting with, long lasting...